Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. I want to start off reporting for The Media Speaks, addressing uh, some information, for a comment, I should say, that I got about an uh, article I did about Hillary Clinton, America's Next Comedic Sensation. If you haven't read the article, go to Media Speaks and do so. The person, and feel free to leave a comment, you'll see my reply, I did not attack this person. Um, brought up an interesting point. You can somehow be called a hater. It's such a stupid word. You're a hater if you don't like Rihanna. No, Rihanna sucks. I'm a dissenter. Um, that kind of thing. Every time I leave a comment, you're a hater, you're a hater. This is what happens. These blanket terms come in, and you end up with rampant stupidity everywhere you go. And you can't even voice your own opinion anymore without somebody saying that you're a hater. There are so many tangible reasons to dislike the job that Hillary Clinton is doing as Secretary of Hate. Why in the world would I go for something as asinine as her race? Because the last I heard, she was a human race. Well, uh, let's not jump to conclusions. Also, I want to go ahead and mention Kuizair. You can see his comment on the dunce cap of the month, January, on the correct views. Just type it in, it's on my channel. Can you make one meaning dunce caps for the nation, nationwide fact that I cannot own feathers for art or a collection? I go to jail for owning feathers, I find. I can't even go to the bird sanctuary and ask for hawk feathers, because if I have hawk feathers, someone else will go out and shoot hawks for feathers. Um, I need more information to know if it's going to get the Dunce Cap of the Month award, but it very well could. Um, I don't know, though. Right now, the radioactive silverware, I looked that up on my channel, seems to be leading the charge. But I did want to address my comments in my mail so that you don't feel that I do so. You write them and then I don't ever acknowledge them. I also usually comment online. This is from Breitbart.com. Nothing but good news, I'll show. Did you hear that? Good news, I'll show. Right, remember the guns show I did was guns, guns, guns. Good, good, good news. This is part of it. DC power plant continues to burn coal environmentalist fume. Ah, uh, you know what? Beautiful news. Because we are not ready to get coal, give coal up in order for the green movement, which is just Agenda 21 designed to steal our rights and the prosperity out of America in order to bring us into a one world government. That is exactly what they want, and it all ties in to this, and we're sick of it. We're sick of it, and you're seeing more and more people, we're not ready to leave coal yet, was my earlier point. We're not ready to leave it yet, because if we do, we're going to have shortages, or we're going to be relying on nuclear. And I do know for a fact that pollution in the air from coal plants give us lung cancer and various things. I acknowledge this. The point is, natural gas is not ready yet, and fracking has its own problems associated with it going to get it. Otherwise, as long as you're not fracking, I don't think most Americans have a problem with natural gas. Second of all, nuclear is a much, much worse cancer risk just due to the routine emissions not even considering when they go red, which they've been coming closer and closer to doing more often. And look up all the cover-ups associated with nuclear. So I'm with Sarah Palin on one thing. Burn! Drill, baby, drill! Oh, yeah, burn, baby, burn. You can do it that way, too, but you're going to have uh, the legalize it on my page, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Washington, D.C. local residents and environmentalists gathered at a meeting room in a Methodist church... Good spot. On Capitol here last Thursday to discuss their dissatisfaction with the Capitol here con congeneration plant. The plant, which was completely coal fired for almost 100 years, exclusively heats the Capitol. However, since 2007, according to the architect of the Capitol, the plant began to move from burning primarily coal to burning mostly natural gas, but not entirely. Not enough for the kings and queens that want to destroy the country. Coal is still burned at the plant, but the rate of its reduction is not fast enough for local environmentalists and lawmakers. Who can bite it, I might add? 
In March of 2009, anti-coal protesters blocked the gates of the nearly century-old Capitol power plant for nearly four hours. They should have run them over. No one was arrested. By May of that year, then-Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, scum, announced that the plant would switch over to natural gas as its sole energy source. The promise was made in large part as an effort from Democrats to limit carbon emissions. Because man-made global warming is alive, but they have to keep selling it. Look, people, this is wonderful news. This is great. Because we've got more and more and more people standing up for the fact that, hey, this whole green thing that we wanted to do didn't work out the way everybody hoped it would. Um, on the way to Cedar Point in the summer, uh, Christelle and I managed to pass, you know, this... This uh, looks like a farm of some kind that has uh, solar panels everywhere. You know what? It's working great. We're not ready to do it on a large scale yet, or it's being held back by the uh, tyrants. Who knows what the truth is on that? But as it stands, we are not ready to switch over without using nuclear. And I say that's ridiculous. Let's get the oil. Let's get the coal. Let's get away from the Middle East. More good news. Yahoo News. Arizona sues EPA over coal power plant emissions. Good news, I told you it was going to be good news. Arizona challenged in federal court U.S. environmental regulators' efforts to force Arizona power companies to spend up to $1 billion to install control equipment at three coal plants to reduce the haze of the region's national parks. Now, I am very, very happy that the coal industry is standing up against the federal government. However, once you get into this article, you realize that what these swines are actually fighting is preventing putting filters on that are going to help the breathing of the residents. I'm going to get to the way they word it, but you didn't tune in to hear me read. I will get to it. But basically... They, there's these filters that they wish to put on the, uh, to prevent the emissions from going really, really bad and putting haze over the natural parks and whatnot. What's the correct view? The correct view is that the people of Arizona should say, you know, well, well let's see, what's that word I'm looking for? They should have a, a dictatorship, no, 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 a tyranny, no, no. I will vote! Oh yeah, the people should get the vote for whether or not these filters get put on. Armed with intelligence. I mean, it does not hard to look up the pros and cons of putting these filters on. So when I say it's good news that the coal plants are rising up, some of this is pure greed on the part of the coal industry too. Because they should have these filters on there if they're going to significantly help people's health. So I'm going to go on. Arizona's Attorney General Tom Horn said in a statement last week that the emission control measures proposed by the U.S. Environmental Agency would not affect health and or reduce emissions visible to the human eye. Well, you know what? I don't know. I really don't know because it is very frustrating to think that there's some way that these filters really could be put on here. And... Uh, you know, this drives a lot of the green weenies. Just because I do not support Agenda 21 doesn't necessarily mean that I support this. Nitrogen oxides react with other chemicals in the atmosphere to form ozone, which causes a white or brown haze in the air that has been associated with asthma and other breathing, breathing disorders, the EPA said. The trouble is, the EPA should not even exist. It is up to the people of the states to regulate state business, and this is a state affair. Um, my opinion, get the damn filters on there so that you're not polluting everything. But then again, before anything gets mandated, the people of Arizona should be the ones to decide this. And uh, you could argue maybe neighboring states to some degree because they all say share the same air. But if you're in favor of that, I mean, you know, the, my thing is you should not be allowed to have a nuclear power plant anywhere near another country. Absolutely not. If America's going to have them, we should have them right smack in the middle of our country. Not, it's not good for us. I don't think they should exist at all. But it is not fair for uh, our nations to have these things the way they do on borders. Because if it goes red, we just poison Canada. They don't get any say where our power plants are. We don't get any say where theirs are. What a stupid, stupid set of logic that is. More good news. Rand Paul, the raw story, I don't understand same-sex marriage. I love this. And before I get a bunch of hate mail on this, 
I am in favor of civil unions. I am in favor of anything that does not involve making the church call something a marriage when it is against their doctrine. See the hair? There are churches that will not marry me because there are certain criteria to be a member of that church and they should not have to marry me nor should I have to cut my hair. I can find another church and they can find another person to preach to. You do not infringe on people's rights. Having said that, gay people should be able to leave whenever they want to. They should have all the benefits of a married couple. I'm only saying that churches should not have to do it. And that implies to me, too. If I was gay, they should not have to marry me. If I live with my girlfriend, as I do, before I marry her, then they don't want to marry me over it. They should not have to. So I can apply the same thing to me. Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, who describes himself as a libertarian, said Wednesday that he opposed the Defense of Marriage Act because it could unintentionally result in same-sex marriage becoming legal. If that sounds backwards to you, listen. I believe in traditional marriage, he said during an interview with Brian Fisher of the American Family Association. I really don't understand any other kind of marriage. Between a man and a woman is what I believe in, and I just don't think it is good for us to change the definition of that. Amen. Paul noted that this state, Kentucky, had approved a constitutional amendment to prohibit same-sex marriage. He said he was not sure about DOMA, but warned the federal government could result in conservatives losing the battle for the country as a whole. And it's true. The government, the federal government, should not be involved in marriage of any kind. Because like Thomas Jefferson said, the government that governs least governs best. Paul said marriage rights should be decided state by state rather than nationally so that urban centers couldn't dictate law. Bingo! The state wants it. I don't know why they would. It's a state by state issue. Very good, Rand Paul. Um, i tell you what. Rand Paul lately has been doing wonderful things. You want some more good news? Sent to me by DJ Nick Andrews. Uh, this is of Yahoo News. Alaska Brewery powered by beer. Now, the only thing I don't like on this is the uh, part about the money, and I'll get to it in a minute. But uh, I thought this was interesting. It is definitely good news. It'll make the greeny weenies happy. And, I mean, I'm not against green technologies unless they're forced upon us. A brewery, brewery in Alaska is being fueled by its own beer, in a manner of speaking. The Alaskan Brewing Company plans to use spent grain from the brewing process to help power the majority of the brewery's functions and reduce energy costs by 70%. So it's going to reduce energy costs by 70%. Now follow this because you're going to get... It's good news, but there's a little bit of... It's not great news. How's that? Here it comes. Even though the brewery spent $1.8 million on the boiler, minus a $500,000 federal grant, that means you and I paid for it, it is expected to save the company money over the long run. Brandon Smith, the brewery's operations and engineering manager, says the new boiler will save the company about $450,000 a year. But we had to give them $500,000. ABC Brewing Company, you suck. Renewable energy is one of the integral components of Alaska's future, and it says the new steam broiler at ABC is a great example of a forward-thinking approach to harnessing a new fuel source. I agree with it in every way, except for the fact that we shouldn't have to be paying for it. Um, more good news. This is one of the reasons that I do what I do. Gatorade pulls ingredient linked to reproductive and behavioral problems. We complain about it, we argue about it, and we get it changed. Brominated vegetable oil, a synthetic chemical that has been patented in Europe as a flame retardant, will no longer double as an ingredient in Gatorade sports drinks. Good news! I'm not going to read the whole thing. You guys get the point. Molly Carter, a spokeswoman for Gatorade owner PepsiCo Incorporated, said the company has been considering the move for more than a year, working on a way to take out the ingredient without affecting the flavor of the drink. You know what? Even if it affected the flavor, you can keep your poison. You're, an, you're another one that's in the running for the Dutz Cap of the Month Award. You're lucky you changed it. The fact that she changed it is probably going to make sure that she doesn't get it. But just the same. Good news. You want to know what? Keep complaining about uh, fluoride. It's going to be gone. Keep complaining about nuclear. They're going to shut nuclear pants down. You people, we can do this. 
Last thing I want to get to. Oh, I was so happy today. I got a hold of Anthony Court from uh, Media Speaks, who I work with. And I was thrilled. Okay, he had a point. He had a point. It deflated me, but he had a point. This is a very small step in the right direction, and there's a chance that it could be manipulated and abused. Although the way this is outlined, it's going to be harder for them to abuse it. Was Court right? Court was right. However, if I played some small role in this finally being changed, I am thrilled. I have talked about it on The Views. I have talked about it nonstop. I did an article for The Media Speaks. So look it up about this. And a union vote for Chinese workers who assemble iPhones, NPR.org. The Chinese workers who assemble iPhones, iPads, and tons of other electronic devices may soon be able to elect their own union representatives. For those of you that don't know, there are suicide nets that line the area, that the building where the Chinese workers make iPhones and iPads and whatnot. So not only did Apple betray the nation, they are scum, and if you feel the same way I do, don't stop buying Apple. Just buy Apple Hughes. They don't get any money for it then when you but from you. Um, you get it from the original owner. You guys get it. Um, there's suicide nets around the building, and by us buying this and allowing American companies to outsource as they do, we are paying for the problem that is destroying these people's lives, and finally they're getting some kind of a voice. Labor unions technically do exist in Chinese factories, but they're typically controlled by management and the government. So a union run by democratic vote of the workers would be a huge hit, and I'm going to read more. The workers in question are employed by Foxconn, a giant filthy, I'm sorry, a giant company with over one million employees in China. Foxconn has been under a lot of scrutiny over the past few years after a spate of worker suicides and accusations of bad working conditions. Oh, but outsourcing our jobs to another country, Sam, it makes the other country better. You're so greedy for wanting it all to yourself. Yeah, it's, it's great for our people. It's absolutely freaking wonderful. Apple, one of the many global electronics firms scum that contact contracts with Foxconn, brought in an independent group to investigate conditions at the company. The group's report called for union elections. Beautiful news, people. Beautiful news. You keep fighting something that you know is wrong, and sometimes other people listen. Did I do this? No, I didn't do it. But I sure as hell was a part of doing it, and that makes me feel wonderful. That is definitely a correct view. Thank you for listening. Good night, friends. God bless. Share the video. It helps me immensely when you share the video. Also, please advertise with me. Do you own a business? Do you have a charity? All money for this show goes to a better show. And if you can donate to me, I promise, every penny goes to, yep, better show. Good night, friends. God bless, and thank you.